Hi, Bonnie here. I just wanted to share with you a short video on using Glitterflex. Glitterflex is a super sparkly material. It comes with a clear protective cover that would be removed prior to embroidery. Once the clear carrier is removed, the sparkle is very intense. As you can see here, see how that sparkles? And with the cover on, it's not quite as sparkly. It's also very, very thin. So it's perfect for garments or anywhere where you don't want that bulk that some of the other glitter sheets have. So let's see how we use this. Anytime I'm setting up for machine embroidery, I like to get all my threads organized next to my machine in the order that I'm going to sew them out. This helps me prevent from accidentally getting green hair on a design or something I didn't intend on doing. We've probably all done that at least once. I also like to leave a gap if a color repeats so that I know something's missing here. I need to go and see what it is and get it in order. But let's see how this goes. Something that I like to do a little differently with Glitter Flex than I do with regular applique is when I'm putting my placement stitch and my applique stitch down, I use a higher contrast thread because in the sparkle material, the thread seems to get buried and I can't see where those stitches are unless there's a little bit of a higher contrast. With your standard material, you don't have that issue. It's really easy to see where your threads are. But in the sparkly stuff, your threads do get buried down and it's a little harder to see. So I like to use a little bit higher contrast, either a lot lighter or a lot darker so that I can see my stitches. So just like any applique, you're going to start out with your placement stitch. In this one, you can see that I have actually two little areas that will be the same color. I'm going to lay my glitter flex on top of that, kind of guesstimate how big a piece I need, and cut a square accordingly. Once I have the square cut, I can then remove the clear carrier. It comes off very easily. Then I like to take a little bit of just regular school glue on a stick, put a little bit of glue in my applique area, and hold it down. This is very safe for your machine. Uh, my dealer is who told me about it. Just put it in place. Slide your hoop back on. And my machine's telling me I didn't have the little arm down all the way. And stitch out your tack down stitch. Once the tack down stitch is complete, you're ready to trim or tear around the applique. This product is a tear away, so you can tear around the applique like so. Save your scraps because you can use those for other little appliques. And then on the little areas, you might want to trim, or at least get it started. And 
If you see any areas that need a little touch up, it's just really super simple to go in and trim those up. Just a hair here. Once you've got that all trimmed up, I like to fuse it down, or what I call pre-fuse it down, while it's still in the hoop. I've moved over to my ironing surface. I have a little steady Betty here, but you could use your ironing board, whatever. I put my hoop right on my steady Betty, which is next to my machine, and then I use a Teflon pressing sheet. Now, if you don't have a Teflon pressing sheet, you can use the clear carrier that came with your Glitter Flex, and you can place that square right on top and press right on that pressing sheet. This acts as a pressing sheet as well as a protective cover. I'm just going to use my Teflon sheet for this one. You're going to want to have your iron at about a cotton setting and you're going to hold it over each section about 15 to 20 seconds. This does take a little while but the results are well worth it. For the sake of time on the video I'm not going to do the whole 15 to 20 seconds for each section on this, but I think you get the idea. You don't have to press super hard, you just want to hold it in place, not moving it around or scooching it, and with a dry iron, no steam. And here's what we've got so far. I've brought the hoop back to the machine. I like to touch the applique and see if it's cooled down just a little bit. I want to give it a little time to cool down and really set with that fabric and fuse well. This is fused well so I'm good to go. I'm just going to embroider the rest of my design like I ordinarily would any applique. While I'm stitching out my applique, I did want to mention anytime you have detail stitching on top of the glitter flex, I highly recommend that you use a higher contrast thread than you might ordinarily use with just standard fabric. It makes it stand out. Otherwise, the stitches just get lost in all that sparkle. I just finished out some detail on this little mermaid. And I'm hoping you can see in the video that using a higher contrast thread, you're able to see the detail. If I would have used a matching color, it would have just gotten lost. Aside from the final pressing, my design is finished. And here's what it looks like. The sparkle is really cool. When I do my final pressing, I like to press all my embroideries, whether it be with glitter flex or anything else. I like to press them face down in a towel. I think it keeps the embroidery a little bit puffier, more dimensional, and I just like the look of that better instead of the possibility of flattening it out by ironing right on the top. One last thing I'd like to add is there's a difference between the Glitter Flex 2 and Glitter Flex Ultra or Rainbow or Hologram. The Glitter Flex 2 comes with two types of films, one on the front and one on the back. They're pretty easy to identify if you've got them mixed up in your stash because the Glitter Flex 2 has a green thin film on the back. You're going to want to remove that green film before you do embroidery. So you're just going to find an end here and peel away the green film like that and that you're going to toss. And then before embroidery you're going to want to also just like you did with the Glitter Flex Ultra or Rainbow, remove the clear carrier, the protective sheet that comes on top.
just that easy. And then all you have left is this very thin, very flexible, easy to tear, easy to cut glitter flex. So whether it's glitter flex ultra rainbow or glitter flex 2, they're all fusible, they all work great, and I hope you enjoy using them as much as I do. Please let me know if you have any questions or comments that you need help with. I hope you've enjoyed this little video, and I hope you come back and see us soon. Bye-bye.